I'd love to see it. And I'd love to show it to you. I just can't wait to see it.
Good evening, listeners. My name is Gaylord Fields, and you are listening to WFMU. Usually, I play the role of host, engineer, and programmer, but I'm only doing two of those jobs today, because today, the person programming all the music is Mr. Tom Verlaine. And uh, say hello to the people. Hey, how, you do, how do you do? Oh. How do you do? I think <laughs> they, they, they all answer by saying, we're doing fine, we're loving <laughs> The snoozy organ mm. choices, and um, you're you're. I've turned over my two-hour show to you this. Uh, this well, fine I hope Sunday. I can fill it. I I grabbed a bunch of stuff, and some of which I haven't heard in like twenty years. But uh, we'll see how it, how it sounds. What what was that last one, by the way? Oh, that was uh, I forget the guy's name. Henry Silvern. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Doing something uh, very. Uh, what's the word? Mm. Snoozy. <laughs> Snoozy. Snoozy. To the very thought of you. I think this was an early uh, home recording. It was, it was on ABC Paramount, but it seems like he overdubbed all the stuff in his house on a, you know, mono machine to a mono machine back and forth. Yeah, probably one that he created himself. Mm. I think it featured the Nova Chord, which is kind of that thing that was pretending to be a violin. Oh, yeah, they're sort of early electronic yeah, uh, dalliances. Mon monophonic sound. And before that, we heard a selection from a record called Comic Book Heroes. Now, this one I haven't heard. Uh, maybe we'll play some more of that. This has a bunch of uh, uh, illustrations, like uh, Splat Pow Yowie uh, illustrations on the cover. Sort of a cross between the whole secret agent sound yeah, and the yeah, Batman, Batman comic thing. book. And I can't figure out who actually did this. The yeah. guy's calling his band the Capes and Masks, and he seems to have cut in a bunch of uh, some semi idiotic, provocative uh, little conversations between it. Oh, here we go. Oh, well, it's Shorty Rogers, the jazz oh, guy. Oh, of course. That's makes Irving, perfect sense. Irving Joseph and Shorty Rogers. Well, there anything with Shorty Rogers' name, I have a rule. Mm. I just buy it. Mm. He. <laughs> He's one of those marks of quality. <laughs> the first one was the first record I ever bought when I was like 10 years old. There was a, where I grew up in Delaware, there was Allmart instead of Walmart. Oh. And Allmart had 99 cent albums in them. I really didn't know what an album was. And this was a, a present to me from my folks. It's an introduction to the music of New Guinea on uh, Prestige International. That's a pretty uh, interesting. Yeah, that's kind of like jumping, like your first swimming lesson being in the deep end of the pool. Yeah, I, I didn't even know what I was hearing. I was really captivated, though, at the time. It's kind of a cool record. And I think it's probably started you on a quest of odd record uh, searching since. Maybe, maybe I keep trying to to find something that strikes me that different. Who knows? And would you say that any of the things? that we've played has any influence on how you make your own music? Um, probably not. <laughs> exactly. It's, I guess the, the sort of analogy I like to use is if you're working in the chocolate factory, you don't exactly sit home and eat a box of chocolates. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we've, we've picked out a couple of others. You know, this is going to be your, your day, your night. Well, so, yeah, I'll be, I'll be happy to hear some of these things. I mean, I have to admit, I use this show for the same purpose, to sort of clear out my record collection, to say, mm -hmm. hey, here's, I need an excuse to play some of this stuff I've spent too much time looking for and in some instances paid too much money for. Mm, yeah. So let's uh, get to the next selection here. You're listening to, my name's Gaylord Fields, and we have Tom Verlaine doing the programming of this program here on WFMU.
You are listening to WFMU. My name is Gaylord Fields. My guest and programming guest is Tom Verlaine. He's picking out all this stuff you hear, and he's going to account for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. The first couple were the Hugo Montenegro Orchestra, the Come Spy With Me record. And uh, that was a Secret Agent Man and I Spy. Maybe we'll get to There's one good cut on that with some cranky, weird synthesizer. Oh, yeah. We'll get to that later. We, we like cranky, weird synthesizer here. Mm. And the other two were that uh, were two different records, right? Think That's that right. Uh, that uh, Bach electric guitar stuff that uh, these French guitarists sort of started doing in the 60s. Uh, I think one was on Nonesuch Records, and the other one was... Uh, can't remember. One right, it's called the uh, Jazz Buck Guitar. Right, it might have been on Mercury or one Mercury. of those. Mercury. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's see where what happened to that. Yeah, that here. was the yeah, Franz Lofler. Franz Franz Lofler was Lofler. the first of them, and then Who might be German actually, uh, or maybe from like Alsace Lorraine. Yeah. <laughs> Alsace. But uh, Lofler's done about fifty records, but hardly any Bach records. Uh. Uh, and, yeah, I thought maybe FMU never played those, so I brought those along. I, I have to admit, I, I personally never played them, and, and <laughs> <laughs> until now, indirectly, that is. But now you're going to run out and buy them. Oh, there. I, well, funny thing is, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to say, you're, you don't know the influence you're going to have on not just my program, but I think other WFMU DJs will be listening as well. <laughs> so if well, it's... Maybe some guitar players will take this stuff in, too, because it's kind of a cool twangy sound, that uh, those Buck electric guitar records. They're, they're yeah. kind of a neat sound. Yeah, I could even imagine a Chet Atkins going all Bach on us. There you go. <laughs> but uh, what we're, we're going to play next is, yeah, we're going to go in a more brassy direction. Isn't that right? Oh, is this the Italian guy? Yeah. Uh, this is, uh, what's the name, Fausto? Fausto Papetti. Yeah. Papetti. Uh, this, this guy's made about 120 totally horrible records, but this one has some kind of, some cool guitar on it. So out of 120 records, there's one good track. There is, what is saying, one And good you've one. gone through all the trouble of finding it. No, us. I just, I actually found this one, and then I found some others and dumped the other ones off really quick, but this one I kept. Uh, so here you go, the best of Fausto Papetti here on WFMU with Gaylord Fields and Tom Verlaine.
you have it tuned to WFMU. My name is Gaylord Field. My guest is Tom Verlaine. He's brought down some of his records, just a small the sliver of what I'm sure is a probably largish record collection. Mm, well, not a whole lot. Not, I have about t- about a tenth as many as most of my friends. Oh. My so, friends have much better piles of stuff, actually. Well, I, I guess here it, it's a quality over quantity thing that we're Yeah, maybe. Getting. Maybe. <laughs> I would <laughs> think so. I'm, I have to say my eyes are a little green from some of the things you brought in. What was that first one? Was that the Papetti? Yes, that was. That was the Jungle Drums from Fausto Papetti. And and that you were saying about him that he sort of yeah. This is on London International. Um, he's an Italian sax player, and during the disco era, made like at least fifty unlistenable records. Oh, so it's the usual sort of snoozy sax, yeah, except with horrible a four disco four records. beat. But yeah, but this one for some reason called Flamingo is got some cool guitar things on it and stuff and then after that we heard the some of the bbc uh, radiophonic workshop stuff right just it some of this sort of mm. out, out there sound library stuff that, yeah. that the kids love these days yeah that was called phantoms of darkness uncanny expectation specters in the wind and evil rises up that evil rises Zep's up i was pretty, I, yeah, yeah that was the one where i was trying to picture what scene that would yeah. be behind yeah hey, hey, I, I was very frightened myself right i i <laughs> have to admit i ducked under the console for at least uh 40 of that uh 62 seconds or so <laughs> <laughs> and then we heard i think the clyde borley record which was a uh, a french kind of orchestra i guess Percussion orchestra. I think that was on Atlantic. That's got some cool stuff on it. Right. That song was called Afromania. Yeah. Even though it, was, it wasn't particularly Afro, no. and nor was it particularly manic. No, but <laughs> but it had other good things going <laughs> for it. <laughs> right. And then you now, I, I think it's safe to say that you acquired a few of these records at the WFME Record Fair. Is yeah. That- well, actually, a lot of these were were from there was a. Uh, one of those moments in the mid '80s where the um, what is it, the uh, Salvation Army on Eighth Avenue and about Twentieth Street, oh, Manhattan. Right. I wandered in one day, and uh, there were about twenty boxes of records, and um, all of it was this kind of stuff, and all of it was a dollar. So I just thought, oh, you know, I think I had thirty bucks in my pocket. And I grabbed thirty records, all of which seemed to be really good. Well, and some of which had notes by the owner on the back where he would, you know, complain about certain things on certain cuts. Those were always fun. So the ones, the ones that had the do not play written next to it, yeah. were the ones that you first drop the needle on. That's yeah. sort of one of the cardinal rules of. Yeah. of, of and all the uh, and all the guitar records from that bunch said uh, too bright or too shrieky, or uh, one I remember said horrible go go music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I wondered who this man was who had these. These records. Had these records, but didn't seem to like very many right. of them. Yeah. Well, I, I hope our listeners are enjoying these these selections. I know mm. that I most certainly am. And speaking of go-go music, I think we're going to start off this next bit. Oh, yeah. This go-go. is uh, the solo record by the Ventures drummer. This is a pretty cool record. And uh, let's get to it here. My name's Gaylord Fields. I have Tom Verlaine here in this WFMU studio. And we're going to go drums a go-go.
Oh, that was Johnny Lytle. I'm a big fan of his. Yeah, that's a great cut. And I just want to remind the listeners that you're listening to WFMU. My name's Gaylord Fields, and I have ceded control of my show to Tom Verlaine. <laughs> mm. So if, if you want to know who's responsible for what you're hearing, it is Mr. Verlaine who is sitting to my left. I take the blame. And uh, what do you want to say about that? the cuts that we played in this uh, set? I think we started off with the uh, Mel... Yeah, yeah, we started off with the Mel, Mel Taylor. Yeah, Mel Taylor and the Magics, Mel Taylor being the drummer from the Ventures. That's called uh, Mel Taylor and the Magics in Action on Warner Brothers. That's a pretty good uh, go-go kind of record. Right. And then after that was... Um, a guy named Polly, P-O-L-Y, who's made gazillions of records, I guess, in the 50s and 60s in uh, Brazil, Hawaiian guitarist. Right. It's almost impossible to find these uh, in playable condition because the vinyl was such crap down in Brazil. Oh, yeah. That's, they, it's really funny because his name is Polly, but he may be the only non-polyrhythmic Brazilian <laughs> musician. <laughs> yeah, I wonder who he was, the... Uh, the notes on this are in, uh, you know, the Brazilian Portuguese thing, so I couldn't couldn't tell you much more about it except it's on Chanticleer, and uh, the one after that was yeah the cool vibraphone stuff. Oh yeah, we we, we there was also that Pierre Larue thing that little. Oh one. yeah, let's talk about yeah him. that sounded interesting. That that's Pierre more... Larue. Now this was a little ten inch that showed up at Academy Records, the the great record shop in Manhattan on Tenth Street. Oh, I miss it, <laughs> and. This, I guess, is what do you call a sound library thing? Exactly. This is called 17 Flashes of Incidental Music, 10-inch. And um, I actually grabbed this for the cover because it shows this geezer with this giant old tube bunch of equipment. It's a cool-looking cover. And uh, I guess that was, what, intended for commercials or background music or something absolutely and now uh -huh. people listen to them in their own right yeah because the man doesn't tell us how to enjoy music right and the pieces we heard were the first one was called in a train speeding through the night a young woman in her compartment dreams of lost love and if you think i'm going to write all that down yeah. you're out of your mind and the second one was jostling crowd in a central african marketplace Wow. Go. Examples of titles longer than the actual yeah. songs. Yeah, I think I'm going to start doing that. <laughs> just titling your own stuff, mm. just making them sort of paragraph sized. Yeah. Ah, so so these so I guess these records do influence you just not musically. Yeah, not musically. <laughs> <laughs> and then we heard the uh the the vibraphone jazz there. Mm. Yeah, that was a record I think I got when another Allmart find when I was a child for 99 cents. It's a uh, compilation record from I think Jazzland or Riverside. Yeah, it was Jazzland. Jazz that one. Yeah. So were did the other kids in in your town just <laughs> like, come over and listen to some records and they're, they think they're going to hear you know <laughs> you know uh, Ricky Nelson or something and it's like <laughs> I think uh, I had a friend that had some Dave Brubeck and his older brother had some John Coltrane in '65 or so, maybe '64. That was like uh -huh. some of my early. You know, hearings and jazz. Right. So you were Delaware's youngest and possibly only <laughs> hipster? I don't know. I <laughs> uh, just want to remind people that we are listening to the music as selected by Mr. Tom Verlaine here. My name is Gaylord Fields. You're listening to WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, WFMU.org. And uh, now that I've given the legal ID, we can proceed for one more hour of this kind of fun. Uh -huh. and, and I am having a great time, uh, and I hope the listener is too, and I hope you are most of all. Okay, yeah. And and we're going to, yeah, oh, we're going to go a little television here. Yeah, well, sort of, yeah. Kind of. And, 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 yeah, okay, let's, I'm not going to tell them what they're going to hear. They're just going to, they're going to pick it out themselves. Right. So let's just get right to it here.
took him to my house, sit him down at my table, gave him all the food and drink that I was able. He ate my chicken and he drank my tea. Now he tries to take my gal away from me. Now do you call that a buddy? Could that be your buddy? I believe I'll ruin my buddy. Such a dirty cat. He smiles in my face, but he ain't my friend. That's just his way to get me to let him in. Then after he done ate and drank for free. Then he tells my chick that she ought to split for me. Now do you call that a buddy? Well, could that be your buddy? Well, if I had 15 cents, I would loan him a dime Because I thought he was a friend of mine But now if I had 10,000 donuts, darn his soul Well, I wouldn't even give him a donut hole How do you call that a buddy? Could that be your buddy? I'll bleep, I'll shoot my buddy Such a dirty cat. Just proving my contention that any song that mentions donuts is a good song automatically. <laughs> <laughs> this is WFMU. You've got it tuned to. My name's Gaylord Fields, and I am having a whale of a time here with Tom Verlaine, who is the programming man behind what you're hearing this evening. Yeah, that was uh, John Hendricks. I don't know what year that record was, probably between 59 and 63. Let's see. I've got it in my hand. I will turn it back over. Hmm. Uh, let's see. The song was called? 62. 62. You called that a buddy. And I haven't heard that in... Gosh, I don't know how many years. I heard that on the radio when I was a kid in Philadelphia, near Philadelphia. And before that was uh, uh, Glenn Campbell doing the uh, James Bond theme. Yes, the Glenn Campbell. Glenn Campbell, the, yeah. the big bad rock guitar of Glenn Campbell on Capitol. Pretty bad brass arrangement on that. They really but, screwed the brass up. Yeah, it just sounds like... like yeah, <laughs> we won't say what that. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm going to stay on this side of the FCC by no, not mentioning right. what it sounds like. Right. And then we started with the uh, the soundtrack recording of the ever popular Twilight Zone, and then a version of it from uh, a sound adventure in space, the Twilight Zone, Columbia record, Marty Manning and his orchestra. Yeah, it was a really good contrast between the mm. tried and true, well-known version and that sort of excursion into yeah. a, a you know a dimension of sight, sound, and mind. I guess you can call it. Yeah, good guitars on the. I mean, the guitars on the original Twilight Zone are. You never think of guitar when you hear that, but it's the guitar's the whole thing on that. 
Yeah, it's yeah. I, I yeah, never weird actually, guitar stuff. Yeah, yeah, I never actually thought of what was making those sounds. They yeah. just allowed it to be supernatural and otherworldly to me. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. I, thank thank you. As a guitarist, I'm glad that you were able to point out yeah. that that was actually a guitar based song. That might have been an influence on me when I was a kid. Um, Although I was playing saxophone when that record came out. <laughs> and maybe that's it. Maybe yeah. you said maybe I should switch the guitar. Yeah. And and since then you've been trying to get that. Particular trying song. to play the Twilight Zone, um, but but failing at that, but succeeding in so many other <laughs> different directions. Mm. <laughs> and and I guess um, what's up next there? Oh, we, we oh let's say we have that Burt Camford thing. Oh we, yeah, this is a great version of uh, Caravan by Burt Camford. Um, maybe you know this one. This is going to be. I I I have to admit that I'm very very enamored of this particular version, but then. Caravan is one of those songs that I, that everyone tries, and most people get it kind of right. Most people get it good. Yeah. So, Caravan, here on WFMU.
We return from that little musical excursion here on WFMU. Want to identify the people responsible in varying degrees here? Uh, I'm responsible <laughs> for the for letting the guest into the studio, and uh, my name's Gaylord Fields. Tom Verlaine is the one programming, and I just want to say how I'm just really enjoying this. I'm, oh, I'm, scribbling, glad, I'm glad. scribbling things down. I'm going to have to spend hundreds of dollars more than you did on these <laughs> records. <laughs> yeah, we heard the, the ever popular Burt Camfort, maybe one good cut every ten records. Yeah, that's about yeah. right. But the good one is often the a good great one. Good. Caravan's real good. Yeah. And then I think we heard the sort of well-known Forbidden Planet music, uh, Lewis and B.B. Barron. Electronic stuff done in an apartment on 10th Street, I think, as I remember, with oscillators and junk. It's always fun to make records in your apartment. <laughs> then this was then we heard you write that great space guitar. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I guess his the name on the record was Young John Watson, but I guess he became Johnny Guitar Watson, right? I, I guess that might be the record that gave him the guitar gave middle him, name. Yes, right. <laughs> that's from 1954. And that shows up on various compilations. Uh, this compilation is from England called Loose Ends on uh, Union Pacific, which I, I think that was a bootleg. Yeah, it just bit. sounds like one of those sort of fly-by-night. Yeah. And now I did s I ask you off while I was playing if this was a record that influenced your playing because yeah, and you said no, no. No, well, no. This was actually given to me by a guy when, uh, when I first went to England, I think, 78. He said, have you ever heard this? And I said, no. And he said, oh, this is a really good track. And uh, uh, Yeah. So it's someone who's heard you play and said, hey, if you play like that, you'll mm -hmm. like. You're, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the, you know, yeah. I, I always like those kind of uh, those kind of tips. Yeah. Where it's like, hey. a lot I, of good records that way. Exactly. I know what you, know, I know what you like to do. You'll really dig this. Mm. Then that last one is this uh, Mexican organ player who was blind. And uh, this guy made it probably a dozen records Ernesto Hill Olvera O-L-V-E-R-A and this one's on RCA I don't know if this is from Mexico or Brazil but he was uh, known for his talking organ sound 
and yeah. um, I think he was speaking Spanish there. Yeah, it sounds. Yeah, you. I heard. It, yeah, the name of the song is Oración Caribe, which mm. means Caribbean oration. Or, mm. Yes. I so think a little, a little, a little love letter to a friend of his, no uh, doubt. Yeah, I'm sure there are many, many messages he was communicating to us. Right. Since he, you know, doesn't have the visuals, this is all he's got. Yeah. But yeah, that's that must have been a real find. Did, well, did, did in, you hear about in, a record like that? Well, um, I had heard of this guy somewhere, and I was, uh, I just got down to Brazil for the first time a couple months ago, and um, a Brazilian guitar player took me around all the vinyl shops, and he said most of them had been raided. Um, years ago, I think, especially Stereo Lab, I think, left, oh, yes. left Brazil with like 500 albums. But, but he said I might like this. There were there were, well, at least six records by this guy. And uh, again, the pressings are so bad, the needles don't track on half of them. But uh, still pretty cool. And I just want to remind listeners that you are listening to WFMU. I'm on till seven o'clock, at which time Bob Brainin will take over. And uh, my name is Gaylord Fields. Tom Verlaine is here in the studio. You know, he's picking out the gems of his record collection and sharing them with you, the WFMU listener. And uh, I think we're going to start off with uh, something from Russia. Is that right? This is a Russian, yeah. I always try to find recordings of bells, and this is a great uh, little 10 inch record of bells in the Russian churches. Ah, and let's uh, not dilly down. Re a real rock and cut. Depuis les temps les plus reculés, le son des cloches a toujours accompagné en Russie les fêtes et les fastes populaires, annonçant les grands événements, convoquant le peuple à ses réunions, indiquant la voie aux voyageurs égarés, appelant à défendre la patrie quand un grand danger menaçait le pays. Les carillons de Rostov sont un des monuments sonores de l'art populaire russe. Il date du XVIIe siècle. Les cloches de la cathédrale de la Dormition de Rostov se sont conservées jusqu'à nos jours. Écoutez le Grand Bourdon, fondu en 1688 par Flore Terentiev. Il pèse 2000 poudres, soit 32 tonnes. On entendait le Gros Bourdon à 20 lieues à la ronde. Les carillons sont une des formes de sonnerie les plus répandues en Russie. Les sonneurs font vibrer tour à tour toutes les cloches, en commençant par le son le plus grave et en finissant par le plus aigu. Le dernier son presque imperceptible est suivi d'un accord puissant de toutes les cloches. De tous les carillons de Rostov, celui qui porte le nom de carillon de Jonas est le plus sobre et le plus solennel.
Dai movimento de gata Na canastra A caravela No coração a fragata Na canastra A caravela No coração a fragata Em vez de corvos no chá Cai voltas vem a pousar Quando o vento a leva ao bar Tem algas na cabeleira e nas veias o latido Do motor de uma traineira e nas veias o latido Do motor de uma traineira vende só me marazia Tempestades a pergoa, seu nome próprio Maria Seu nome próprio Maria, seu apelido Lisboa. Got your radio tuned to WFMU, I believe. If I uh, if my predictive skills are working, <laughs> oh, there, there's no predicting there. If you you're hearing this, you're hearing it on WFMU, or maybe on your computer through the aegis of WFMU. My name is Gaylord Fields. I have Tom Verlaine here in the studio with me, and he is he's responsible. He's he's the man here. And what we heard in that set was it was short in song but long in duration. Uh. Well, that first one was Rostov Chimes, or Russian Bells. Didn't realize that had a French narration on it, but uh, Bell Records are always cool. It's a 10-inch on Melodia from Russia. And the next one was the Clark Boland Big Band on Atlantic, an album called Handle With Care. And that was Long Note Blues with that endless trumpet note by, I think, a guy named Suleiman, Idris Suleiman. Yes. You know that trumpet uh, player? Yeah. yeah, and he evidently can hold a note a really long yeah, time. Yeah, he had that like thing like uh, the Rasan Kirk thing, yeah. that breathing bagpipe cheek thing. Right. Did, yeah, maybe he had like, you know, two different horns in his mouth like Rasan <laughs> Roland Kirk. And he was just, <laughs> that's how he was able to sustain. <laughs> but that's a, yeah, that great bebop drumming on there that Kenny Clark and uh, I guess this band was made up of uh, Europeans and Americans and. Yeah. They cut a lot of records in Germany. This one's on Atlantic in the States. Pretty good. I'm not crazy about big band stuff, but that one, that's kind of a Well, later, super cool for cut. some reason, the later big, like the post big band heyday big band stuff is can, tends to be kind of interesting. Hmm. Or at least because you don't hear much of it. You don't hear much of it, right. The 40s stuff doesn't get to no, me at all. No, that's what I mean. But something like, um, who am I thinking of? Oh, Don Ellis or something like that. He did yeah, like, once it, in a while you yeah. hear a cut. Alrighty, and then we heard that uh, the what was that? oh Maya Maya, Maya, Maya the great yeah. great Portuguese singer beautiful beautiful voice good to have some voices in this set yeah we we've been a little, a little voice, shy on yeah, the voices. voices well maybe we'll correct that in the yeah, next twenty minutes more. that we have all oh, right but I do want uh, listeners to know that I'll be on till seven o'clock and I will have Tom Verlaine here by my side picking out the records that. 
that you will hear over these WFMU airwaves. And, and this is something that you promised would be odd, the next cut. Which one we got up there now? It's that uh, Alexander Laszlo. Oh, yeah. This is another little 10-inch thing. This is called, what, The Secret Music of China or something? Yes. I don't know what this is, whether this was for a play. It sounded like it may have been for a play or some sort of intended background. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll all de- check this Yeah, out. we'll determine what exactly is going on here, reach some kind of consensus by the time we get back on mic and tell you <laughs> right. the results of our investigation. Okay.
WFMU, Gaylord Fields, Tom Verlaine, teaming yeah. up in some fashion here, uh, and that he's doing all the heavy lifting. I'm just uh, doing all the miscuing. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's just... You you tell us about right. what we hear there. I, I well, the first one I still can't figure out. It's a ten inch on Columbia, and it's uh, the secret music of China, uh, under the direction of Alexander Laszlo, and uh, it seems to be a soundtrack for a movie never made or a play never done or something. And uh, we heard Ghosts of the Great Wall and something else, very weird thing. Oh, then, then we heard Jazz Raga style on. EMI from India, music by uh, Shankar Jakshan. I might be saying his name wrong. Early attempt at, you know, raga jazz. Right. Kind of weird little guitar player in there. And then we heard another cut from that Marty Manning Orchestra record on uh, Columbia, the Twilight, uh, Twilight Zone thing from the 60s. That was, I think, Far Away Places. That's correct. And we have about about nine minutes left and a couple of more choices here. And right. we'll get to those and then we'll say our, our farewells. And I just let's just straight away get to it. Okay. Uh, it is Sunday, you know, so I guess we need to do this bit of business. Yeah.
Some people like to rock, some people like to roll, but me, I like to sit around to satisfy my soul. I like my women short, I like my women tall, and that's about the only thing I really dig yeah, at all. Well, man, well, I belong to the B generation. I don't let anything trouble my mind. I belong to the B generation, and everything's going just fine. Woodsville, yeah. Some people say I'm lazy, and my life's a wreck. But that stuff doesn't faze me. I get unemployment checks. I run around in sandals. I never ever shave, and that's the way I wanna be when someone digs my grave. Put a beat in the White House. I belong to the B generation. Yeah. I don't let anything trouble my mind. Sneaky B, yeah. I belong to the B generation. And everything's going just fine. Back on the road. I once knew a man who worked from nine to five. Just to pay his monthly bills was why he stayed alive. So keep your country cottage, your house and lawn so green. I just want a one-room pad where I can make the scene. So out it's in. I belong to the B generation. I don't let anything trouble my mind. I belong to the B generation. And everything's going just fine. Oh, oh man, poetry and jazz there. I belong to the B generation. Yeah. I don't let anything now, that's my trouble story. my mind. Hey. Let's I flip the coffee to house, the yeah. beat generation. Yeah. Now we've Everything made this so long enough. WFMU East Orange, WXHD Mount Hope, WFMU.org. My name is Gaylord Fields, and my guest has been Tom Verlaine. And that's pretty much our last set of yeah. this. Well, I wanted to thank you for having me. It was loads of fun. Oh, well, thank you for coming down to the station. It's been an absolute joy. I would mm. love to do this again. It's yeah. just a great, great fun. Oh, thank you. And um, let's just talk about these last few things that... Oh, yeah. Gee, that was the... Uh... I think Alex Bradford record, the uh, gospel record on right. Columbia. Great, exalted record. And then we heard another Pierre LaRue from that strange little uh, 17 flashes of incidental music. That was his, uh, I guess, factory music piece. Oh, yeah, it was. It Great was piece. Really amazing. Yeah. And then the last one was the, yeah, the classic, uh, The Beat Generation by uh, Rod McFadden and Door. Uh, actually written by the schlock poet uh, Rod McEwen. The flip side of The Mummy, which okay. maybe, maybe we'll play that next year. Oh, yeah, I, I think we, yeah, yeah. Maybe we'll have to start off, start with, off the, with The mummy. mummy. That way it'll be this sort of, you know, end piece, <laughs> begin piece. You know, continuity is so important in the, yeah. in the music world. Well, that was actually the, the first 45 I ever bought. I think I was eight years old or something. Wow, and you can't mm -hmm. say that that didn't influence your music. Well, <laughs> maybe a bit. Okay, that's all you'll <laughs> cop to. Well, any uh, last thing you want to add before we, uh, anything you want to talk about? or? Uh, well, part? we should put a beat in the White House, like the man said on the record. <laughs> you, you heard from Tom Verlaine, put a beat in the White House, get rid of that deadbeat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he didn't say that, but I'm hoping he thinks that. And that's it for me. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank everyone for um, listening. And uh, Bob Brandon coming up now. Thank you so right. much. Good night now. All right. Bye.